thought that dog came from your butt. <laughs> <laughs> Deadly Tarantula Girl coming to you from my private Serpentarium. Tonight to bring you a viewer comment video. And I get a lot of interesting comments, some crazy comments, and some that I think are good enough questions that I would like to answer on camera because I think that the answers might help a lot of you out there. And some of them are just viewer shout outs because these are faithful viewers who are always gushing compliments and it's just really, really sweet. So the first one was a comment from Flaz Hexic, and he was asking about the sudden infant death syndrome that comes with a baby of Vicularia or Carabina versicolor, and that can occur, and what he can do to prevent it. Obviously, this is a syndrome that can happen with a lot of tiny little teas, especially tropical animals and it primarily comes from them either not having enough airflow or getting too dry. It also can be uh, complicated that they need such teeny tiny little food. So you want to make sure not to feed your animal anything that's larger than their body and that's, that's big. You'd be surprised at how large of a prey item they can take down. On the other hand, a cricket can eat your tarantula. Actually, crickets can eat an adult tarantula. They can just nibble it to death. So you never want to leave a bunch of crickets in with your animal over time. If you even have a sturm eye or a big smith eye, you don't want to throw 20 crickets in there and leave them, especially without food and water because they will eat your tarantula. Or I should say they can. When you have a tiny little tropical spider like that, Sometimes they get too wet. If they are left in dank, wet conditions, number one, they can get too wet and just die from being bogged down with moisture, but that can also contribute to mold and bacterial development. One reason I like vermiculite is because it tends to not grow as much mold as coconut fiber and stuff like that. Not letting them stay wet, not keeping them too dry, not feeding them anything too large or too much. So a good rule of thumb on moisture is to mist them to where they're damp for a few days. Basically, let's say you water once a week. Let's say you water once a week. You wanna dampen that enclosure on one side to where it'll be wet until it dries out about the sixth day. By the sixth, seventh day, it's totally dry then you come back and moisten it again. So that's a good way of knowing that your enclosure has a good amount of moisture. Don't ever, ever waterlog your substrate. Let's say that you missed your substrate and then you turn the enclosure upside down. If water is dripping out, it is way too wet. So that's another little test to know that you're too wet. Thank you to Flax and hopefully that answered your question about sudden infant death syndrome in baby versicolor. My next little shout out is to Mr. Nader 1978 and also to Courtney Pye. They both are just really cool viewers who have left uh, complimentary comments. Courtney Pye has commented, well, I'll just read it, how about that? Courtney Pye said, new to this channel, absolutely love your energy, your respectful calm, I'm sure these critters love your presence. They seem very happy. I love reading comments like that where people are just enjoying the content, just learning, so that's really cool. I also appreciated this comment by Mr. Nader, and it made me laugh, because it was kind of long. It's silly. Mr. Nader 1978 said, Dear Miss Tarantula Girl, I was very reluctant to post this comment, but I thought to myself, hell, why not? I can get my point across without being offensive. Okay, so um, I really have no interest in those creepy, multi-legged, blood-sucking creatures. That being said, for a fellow that loathes anything with more legs than myself, since I've stumbled across your page, I've discovered that I found a new interest in watching spider vids lol blushing a little 
I've been a spider video watching fool now, I tell you. And then he put all kinds of funny emojis. So I realized that I have a range of viewers. Some people are spider or reptile enthusiasts, and other people are those who just stumble across the channel for one reason or another. And I love that I have all different kinds of people watching my channel, men, women, children, elders, Americans, people from all over the world, and that I am hoping that I bring light and education to all of you in some way or another. So thank you to Nader and to Courtney for watching. That makes me happy. Okay, this was in reference to a comment by Samuel Baker, who was asking about cohabitating different species of invertebrates. I get asked that a lot here or there in different forms. And basically what I would say is that it's not advisable in general to cohabitate two predators together in general. I have seen successful communal colonies of tarantulas, however you never know what is going to happen. And in general it's not a good idea to cohabitate two different species that are together, especially predator and predator or predator and prey, because in the wild they would each have their own little niche even if they're near each other. They have their own little home. And so in general I do not recommend that. But that was a good question, so thank you for that one Samuel. The next viewer comment was from Red in the Valley, and I'm gonna read it because it's a little bit longer. She or he said, I hope this finds you well. I must admit, I'm petrified of spiders myself, but only because, oh, a girl. <laughs> she wrote, I hope this comment finds you well. I must admit I'm petrified of spiders myself, but only because I was made to be. When I was a young girl, I was subjected to the most horrific experience ever with spiders. I was in the care of a babysitter and she had a couple friends there and they played a game on me. Then one came up with the idea to play a nasty trick. Where we were in the city, there was a balcony that spiders would web around the railings and outdoor lights and such. Well, these kids gathered the spiders, and when the game was underway with me, they laid me down, said to close my eyes, and when I was told to open them, I could see the stars and moon. So as I was instructed, I closed my eyes, and they dumped a jar full of spiders onto me, crawling all over me and biting me all over my body. I tore my clothing off and jumped in the shower and stayed in there for what felt like forever. I don't recall being afraid of spiders before, but now years later, as an adult, and am fascinated by the look of large spiders, but st still crippled with fear. I'd like to personally thank you for sharing the beauty of these animals. Maybe someday I will be able to ditch this fear and handle one tarantula, given an opportunity to. So she commented that on my um, video that was top secrets about me or something. And I just wanted to reach out to her and to all the people who are terrified of tarantulas and or spiders. And I want to let you know that most of you have had some kind of experience that you may or may not remember that taught you to be afraid of spiders. When in reality, spiders and tarantulas, they are not here to hurt us. They are not out to kill us, to hunt us, to injure us. They actually are very peaceful and beautiful animals. So I want to thank you for watching the channel even though you're afraid and just know that knowledge is power and that like me, you too can overcome your fears. So I am so glad that you commented that. And that goes to everybody who's afraid of spiders or tarantulas or anything else in the world. Okay, the last comment that I wanted to talk about was one by Jason Holmes and he just had a short little comment talking about how when he first started keeping snakes he would have bad dreams all the time that they had gotten out and he asked me if I ever had nightmares or bad dreams about anything like that and um, to be honest with you I have a lot of weird dreams a lot of times but I think your dreams are often rooted in uh, fears or insecurities. And sometimes they're about your animals escaping or about whatever it is you're dreaming. And sometimes it's more metaphorical. But my fears overall 
is that my animals um, might get sick or might get hurt or something like that. But in general, I have primarily good dreams about animals. Sometimes I have weird dreams like, I don't know, just that they're my best friends and stuff like that. But anyway, I don't typically have nightmares about animals. Sadly, I have nightmares more about people than animals. But that was an interesting question and I encourage you to investigate what the meaning of that dream might be. I wanted to thank everyone who watches. My channel is now five years old and I'm so excited to still be going strong. I love you all so much. Keep commenting and I try to answer back as many of you as I can. If you guys keep watching, I will keep filming and I'll see you guys in YouTube land very, very soon.